person. Maybe we have a bad connection. I'm sorry about that. Will you tell me you're not a robot? Just say I'm not a robot, please. I am a real person. Do any of the clips you're shown freak you out in some way or evoke some kind of discomfort in your being? Did you feel a sense of unease or eeriness as you were watching those clips? Well, today we're going to explore why that is. Hi, I'm Ash. Welcome back. If you're new here, I make vlogs and often I talk about sociological topics. And today we're going to be talking about the uncanny valley effect. As usual. Here's my laptop because my memory sucks. I can't memorize lines for shit. I wish I could, but you know, you're just going to have to deal with that. I'm sure I'll get better as I go on. I do want to say I did have a goal of getting to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year. So please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this content and yeah, hopefully we can get there before the end of the year. The Uncanny Valley effect or hypothesis, whatever you want to call it, is something that both fascinates and freaks people out at the same time. Why do robots, dolls, and digital avatars that almost look human make us feel so uneasy and uncomfortable? What's really going on in our brains? And more importantly, how does society shape this strange reaction to seeing these humanoid creatures? First things first, what exactly is the uncanny valley? This is a term coined by Japanese roboticist Mashari Mori. I apologize for the pronunciation, I'm not sure. In the 1970s, it refers to this weird dip in our comfort level when we encounter something that looks almost human, but not quite. And what's even weirder about it is that there are different levels of discomfort. This means that some people, like myself, are way more susceptible to the uncanny valley effect than others. The closer a robot resembles a human, the less likely humans are to trust them. But if a robot has a bit of a cutesy vibe, then we would be more willing to trust them. The Wikipedia def definition is as follows, and I'll put a screenshot in here. The uncanny valley effect is a hypothesized psychological and aesthetic relation between an object's degree of resemblance to a human being and the emotional response to the object. Examples of the phenomenon exist among robotics, 3D computer animations, and lifelike dolls. The increasing prevalence of digital technologies has propagated discussions and citations of the valley. Such conversation as has enhanced the construct's verisimilitude. The uncanny valley hypothesis predicts that an entity appearing almost human will risk eliciting eerie feelings in viewers. So basically that means the closer a robot or avatar looks to being human like me and you, or maybe I'm a robot, I don't know, I'm not a robot, um, without fully getting there so it's not quite human, the more it creeps us out. It's that space between, hey, cool, and yikes, what is that? But here's the thing. Our reaction to the uncanny valley isn't just a biological thing. It's deeply influenced by culture and society too, and also evolutionary psychology. So all the disciplines impacts the uncanny valley effect and why we feel it. We've been making humanoid figures forever with ancient dolls and now we have advanced AI driven robots and more and more CGI characters. But as technology improved and these creations became more lifelike, we felt we started to feel uneasy. And side note here, I have a blog post. Please go check that out on ashycakes.com. This video will be in that blog post and that blog post will be linked in the description below. Okay, moving on to the uh, hypothesis of the uncanny valley. Uh, so I'll put a screenshot in here again, but this is all taken from Wikipedia. So the original hypothesis states that as the appearance of a robot is made more human, some observers' emotional response to the robot becomes increasingly positive and empathetic until it becomes almost human. At which point the response quickly becomes a strong sense of revulsion, like, oh, I'm glad get that away from me. 
However, as the robot's appearance continues to become less distinguishable from that of a human being, the emotional response becomes positive once again and approaches human to human empathy levels. So you can see this on a graph and I'll put it in here so you can see and hopefully that makes a lot more sense. The sociology of the uncanny valley is all about understanding how this discomfort isn't just about a physical appearance. It's about social expectations, social norms, and even power dynamics. So in this video, we're going to explore all that. The first topic that I would like to discuss today is expectation versus reality. Why does the uncanny valley make us feel so uncomfortable? One theory from a sociological perspective is that it's all about mismatched expe expectations. Us as people have certain rules and norms for how humans should behave. And when something looks almost human but doesn't act quite right, maybe its movements are stiff or its expressions are kind of off, our brains get confused. It's kind of like seeing someone break the social script or social norm, social norm, sorry, and it freaks us out. For example, one notable uncanny valley effect is the CGI characters in the Polar Express. So that was great CGI for its time, but it still wasn't quite right. And it evoked a sense of total discomfort <laughs> and like the cartoons just fell off. Our brains wanted these cartoons to act and look exactly like humans, but they didn't, and so we got weirded out. And I'm sorry to my pen pal over in Canada who loves this movie. The movie is really nice for sure, but the cartoons are absolutely terrifying. <laughs> and whenever I start to think about that movie, I get freaked out myself. So in short, we don't expect something that isn't human, but almost looks human to behave in certain ways. And in turn, it elicits, elicits a fair response in us. The uncanny valley effect blurs the line between fascination and discomfort. The next thing I want to talk about is social norms and human identity. So kind of um, elaborating on the first point. But the uncanny valley goes deeper than just discomfort and weird vibes. It taps into something more primal or natural, an understanding of what it means to be human. Sociologists such as Taj Fell and Turner in 1979 have argued that people will participate in both in-group and out-group types of behaviors. It's kind of like an us versus them situation where people will often show solidarity within their social group and it's a form of social identity theory whether it's humans versus animals humans versus machines or even different social groups these boundaries help us define our own identity and even though this view can definitely be problematic it can help us understand why we may experience the uncanny valley effect robots aren't like us we see them as different from us and we see them as something that's distinguishable from human form. So when a robot or a digital avatar starts to look human, it messes with these boundaries that we have. We start to ask, is this thing alive? Could it replace us? And these are deep existential questions about what it means to be human. And the uncanny valley is something that forces us to confront them. Okay, we're moving on now to power dynamics. This is another interesting angle about how the uncanny valley reflects social power dynamics. Think about it. Robots and AI are becoming a bigger part of our everyday lives from customer service to healthcare to even driving our cars to even self-driven cars. These machines are getting more human-like, but they're also symbols of control and labor. Many believe that part of our discomfort comes from the fact that we see these almost human machines as both competitors and tools. On one hand, they're helpful. On the other hand, they're kind of threatening because they blur the line between human autonomy and technological control. We don't mind robots doing the boring mundane tasks that we don't enjoy doing, but when they do the cool stuff like writing or we think that they might might like to feel something like we do we're like wait 
no stop okay so what about some evolutionary psychology perspectives and i feel like as a social scientist it's definitely important to look at other um ways of understanding things and we can definitely use and draw on these to understand certain topics so we're going to discuss some evolutionary psychology and some cognitive conflict perspectives what's really going on in our brain so the first one is the threat avoidant hypothesis so this hypothesis persists that such an object may pose a threat to humans for example seeing a human noid figure may trigger a pathogen avoidance response where people associate such beings with disease and in turn we want to avoid that being it's quite biased so basically humans will see a robot or a figure x as a threat and the influence of those threats skyrockets and so they avoid those threats because it's seen as a threat the second one is the evolutionary aesthetics hypothesis this is all about perceived attractiveness which i find really fascinating if a human views a humanoid figure as attractive then such figures are seen as less airy so they are judged on typical attraction markers such as facial proportions skin quality and symmetry so like the high cheekbones having a symmetrical face and vice versa obviously the third one is the mind perception hypothesis this hypothesis possesses the idea that when a human sees something so lifelike they become scared that and they think that the that figure or robot is going to be able to see feel think in the same way that humans do shall we watch westfield <laughs> um which is, is scary to think about and the fourth one from this conflict um cognitive conflict perspective is the violation of expectation hypothesis and this is exactly how it sounds people have certain expectations of how people behave and it goes so far as people expecting robots to act like people even though we're scared when they do but they don't they act mechanical and people experience a range of discomforts so on one hand we're like oh act like a person but when they do that that's creepy and then on the other hand oh act mechanical but that's also creepy it's so strange now we've got all of those perspectives out of the way i want to quickly talk about deep fakes and yes i have written about this before and i do want to make a video about them too what about deep fakes and the uncanny valley because surely i feel like they have some sort of connection it's not the same as a robot but I think they do have a connection and personally i think that deep fakes are a new type of uncanny valley a world that people are still learning to navigate but it's uncanny valley in a different way because it's still unsettling but it's unsettling because it's a likeness to what you look like but it's not a hundred percent correct or you a hundred percent you for example think about those deep fakes of tom cruise leonardo dicaprio and margot robbie they all have a degree of likeness or similarity to the real actors, but something still feels off. You get a gut feeling that something's not quite right. Or you might get some sort of unease watching those types of videos, uh, or like a pit in your stomach, or you might just naturally question it. And this new way of feeling uncanny valley can be in different forms, such as disgust, confusion, shock, etc. Hutch 2024 says the unsettling visceral response is due to the acknowledgement that deep fake media presents such a powerful semblance of reality that it can sway other people's beliefs about the things you've said or done. The places you've been or the ideologies or opinions that you hold, your identity, your brand and your entire reputation could be drastically altered or even destroyed by this technology in an instant. Unfortunately, the court of public opinion perception is reality. With this technology, any moderately tech savvy person can now transform the perception of anyone. And more specifically, they can transform the perception of you. The implications are terrifying when you put it that way. And now we're going to get to probably the my favorite part of this video. What about the rise of the uncanny valley trend online specifically on tiktok and specifically the uncanny valley makeup on tiktok 
we know that trends tend to come and go, especially on platforms like TikTok because it's it's such a short attention span. But as you may have already seen at the start of this video, there are some rather creepy makeup trends with like an uncanny valley sort of effect. People will do their makeup in a specific way to make themselves look like a robot or not quite human. And they will pair it with a certain sound such as Brutus from the Buttress or that what do you mean I am a real person sound. And usually there's like a creepy jump scare to go with. According to an article by Alexandra Pauly in 2023, the Uncanny Valley makeup trend began with TikTok user Blonde Girly. I'll put it in here. I don't know why this particular user started it, but we do need to look at the social context surrounding the time when the trend uh, kind of took off. So it began sometime in 2023, so last year, not that long ago, when there was a really big rise in AI news. And this news was everywhere. It was um, flooding everyone's feeds, um, mainstream media, digital media, uh, all of that. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was some fear mongering going on behind the scenes with that, especially in a post pandemic world. But in my expert opinion, <laughs> Um, I think that there was a bit of reaction against that and it manifested in this sort of uncanny valley makeup trend way. And I feel like there also may have been a reaction from the rise in plastic surgery and people altering the way they look. I probably would never get plastic surgery but I'm People can do what they want with their bodies as long as they're happy. There was a lot more lip fillers, a lot more Botox, and there was a lot more conversation around it. Like it was becoming more normalized and a lot more famous people were getting it. And I feel like a lot of people would have been struggling with what is actually real. There's also as in digital manipulation of media and so on. Yeah, and so they were struggling with what's real and what's not. And this was like kind of like a catalyst event or reaction to everything going on at the time or the social context of the time. But this is an uncanny valley in the same way that it is when we see a humanoid figure or a robot. It's a new type of uncanny valley and I'm going to put some examples in here for you to have a look at. this but today we have gone over the concept of the uncanny valley effect we have defined it we've explored several sociological aspects about it that contribute to the eerie feeling it evokes in individuals uh, these aspects have included the interplay between expectation and reality the influence of social norms human identity power dynamics and then we also delved into discussions about evolutionary psychology talked about deep fakes and we touched on my favorite part of the video the emerging trend of uncanny valley makeup thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video all the references will be down below including my blog post uh, please like and subscribe to my channel so that you never miss one of these deep dives again i'm ash i love you all thank you so much and i'll see you in the next one longer you look the more uncanny it gets